2023 has been a great year so far for basketball shoes, but you guys already know I'm pretty much anticipating the pinnacle of performance every single season. Oh man, I'm so excited. And they smell amazing. They actually don't, they don't smell like anything. They're so see-through. <laughs> Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official WearTesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and breakdown on what could be the best basketball shoe of the year. And this, my friends, is the Air Jordan 38. And goddamn, these are f***ing beautiful. What do you think? They look like they are the next in line as far as like everything we Like to get a sandwich seen. or what? No, I'm just saying like, yeah, this is going to follow the 37, which follow the 36, which follow the 35. They all... Really? Yeah. It kind of reminds me of a Pokemon. We've just leveled up or something. No. Nah. Yes. <laughs> These remind me of the 34s. Not in the sense that they look like them. Although, I guess kind of when you bring it up, a little bit. But it's mostly just that, you know, the 34s took something and just kind of like refreshed it. And that shoe was amazing. And then everything after that was kind of derivative of that model. This one, though, ditches all that stuff. There's no eclipse plate. There's no see-through hole. There's no unlock zoom and all that stuff. It's all different shit. And this, it just feels like a nice little refresh or revamp of the line and i also think that the stuff that they did to it as far as the callbacks to the air jordan 8 are so subtle and so perfect that it still feels like its own thing it doesn't feel like like the 35s the giant tongue which i loved it just feels awesome now before we deep dive into the shoes i did want to take a quick look at the box just because it's the most lackluster box i think we've ever seen on a flagship air jordan and it's because they actually did something with a purpose the entire shoe the packaging all that stuff it's all part of their move to zero program so this shoe right here and everything that it comes with which is nothing it's just the box and the shoe all was made with a purpose in mind very similarly to today's sponsor so today's video is brought to you guys by the good folks over at dime sports co they make these dime balls right here these are awesome i use this ball exclusively outdoors not this one this one even though it says indoor game ball i've only used this thing outdoors and it is awesome it's like a tank you know what i mean this is not something that you can do with a wilson or other competitors and stuff like that unless you buy their outdoor specific models believe it or not i've used this outdoors for over two years throughout the pandemic and all that stuff this is probably the ball that you see in all of the b-roll shots during all of those videos and it's still just as grippy and just as tacky moisture wicking all of that kind of good stuff the channels inside the ball feel awesome Awesome. So if you're a shooter or if you're a ball handler and you'd like to be able to feel all of that stuff on your fingertips, you're gonna love it. I guarantee it. Now the ball itself isn't the only thing awesome about the company. They're also a brand that's on a mission. So basically anytime that you purchase one of their basketballs, every dollar in profit, they donate a dime to various youth sports charities that pay for league fees and uh, uniforms and all that kind of stuff like the equipment, the refs, all that stuff. So that's why they're called dime. They're actually giving an oop to other people. So you help them out and then they help out others it's kind of paying it forward all within itself they do ship it to you inflated and everything just like this this came straight out of the box the box holds the basketball perfectly they also all come with a basketball pump needle which i think is really useful i don't think you can ever have enough of these the retail price on the ball is 65 bucks so obviously it's cheaper than the competitors if i was going to compare this ball to a different ball on the market the easiest one is the wilson evolution it's basically the same exact type of feel it's got the same microfiber type of cover the only difference is, is it's not a wilson it's a dime so if you were interested in grabbing one of these basketballs, all you got to do is check the link down below in the description box. It'll head you over to their website where you can check out. 65 bucks, you get this bad boy right here. Use it indoors, outdoors, whatever it is that you want. You'll actually know which ball is yours too, because it's not the same ball as everybody else's. Now, like I was saying, the box itself is part of the Move to Zero program. So we've got literally nothing on here. It just says that it's part of the Move to Zero program and that 20% of the shoe or this product is made with at least 20% recycled content. Down here though, it's pretty cool. I don't know exactly what it is. It looks like one of those things that when we were kids spirograph is that what they were called where you put it in the gear and you follow the thing and it makes some crazy ass design that's what it looks like right here it says designed and engineered for the greatest of all time and they also have that same exact call out right there at the uh four foot section right in the middle the shoe itself again looks fantastic i think that this is a beautiful shoe i cannot wait to see the low tops like could you imagine these as a low oh my God, it's gonna be great. But anyways, the outsole right here is, again, just like the 34s, they just kind of reintroduce the herringbone traction pattern, 
no frills, no gimmicks. When I put this on our little stage right over there and we just kind of do little traction tests and stuff like that, I mean, this is mad grippy. So I have a good feeling about this, man. I have a good feeling about this. The brand does have uh, their own YouTube channel and in that channel, they have this video, like a breakdown of like kind of behind the design. If you haven't checked it out, it's really awesome. But basically it highlights this shoe as well as their other signature athlete shoes, the uh, Tatum 1s, Zion 3s, and the Luka 2s. One of the things that I noticed while watching that whole thing is that there was a version of this shoe with a solid white rubber outsole instead of the clear bottoms. So I'm curious and wondering, because they've done this many times in the past, if the overseas version will feature XDR outsole, which would also be a solid rubber outsole instead of the clear rubber. That's typically what they do. But anyways, the outsole feels awesome. Does it feel like it's going to be durable outdoors? Not exactly. Are you really going to buy the flagship Jordan, the pinnacle of performance, the highest price model typically on the shelves, except for I think LeBron's might be a little bit more than this. Those were 200. These are just under. Are you going to spend that much money for an outdoor basketball shoe? I mean, if outdoors is all you play, then go for it. I understand that. However, I don't think that the majority of the consumers after this shoe are looking for something to destroy outside. I think they're looking for their next true game shoe for indoor play. Now, the cushion is very interesting, especially when you like take a look at the KD16s where they kind of remove some of the stuff that we all love, like that Zoom Strobel. It's actually in here. So we have full length Zoom Strobel. I do wonder, this is a conspiracy theory, but I just wonder if like, because there's no Zoom Strobel in any of the units anymore or any of, you know, Nike's signature stuff. So I'm wondering if Jordan brand kind of like, that's ours now. Because it seems weird that they would just switch it up out of nowhere. But anyways, like I was saying, there is a full-length zoom strobel in there. The insole itself is a recycled material, so it's not quite ortholite. It's got a whole bunch of weird shit in there. It's ortholite-ish, but I'm not going to say that it's actually ortholite. It just looks like a bunch of scraps. Again, part of that whole move to zero thing where they're using as much recycled material as possible. Now, in addition to the full-length zoom, underneath that is a phylon midsole. Feels like it's injected phylon. It's kind of firm to the touch, but it feels really good underfoot. And then underneath that, you can actually kind of see it poking through, but it's that bright red stuff under there. And that is what they're calling Kushlon 3.0, which is very interesting to me, uh, just overall as a consumer, just because I've been touting how good Kushlon is. I've been saying that they should be using it, not Jordan brand specifically, but just, you know, the Nike brand and stuff like that. But I've been saying that they should be using that stuff for, man, almost, or maybe it has been over a decade. I don't even remember, but like they used to use that stuff on their budget shoes, their budget basketball shoes. I've got like, I think it was called the Prime Hype DF or something like that. But that featured Kushlon. The old Chris Paul models featured Kushlon within the Pajalon. And uh, yeah, so like ever since those models, I've been always like, yo, you guys should use Kushlon more. And now it's kind of like, it feels like the time, like they've just been using it nonstop. I do wonder where Kushlon 2.0 was. I don't even remember hearing about that. So that's weird. Anyways, you can actually see it throughout the entire outsole right here. It is full length and it feels incredible. Like I gotta say, Kushlon is a foam that is rubber based, which most foams are. They're kind of like a mixture between plastics and foams. It's really weird, like when you go and actually like look at what all of the polymers are. Nagler! What? and how different they can be like in certain instances. Like sometimes they could be like this, they could be kind of fluffy and bouncy like a foam, but they can also harden it so that it could be like a PVC pipe or whatever. It's just super strange, but hey, that's science. Wait. My only concern is that it's very soft in the heel and it also is rounded. So my only concern would be potential instability for people that rock on their heels a lot. And I don't mean literally rock on their heels. I mean, people that use their heels while in motion instead of being a forefoot and then onward. Some people actually like to like really hard break on their heels and stuff. And sometimes when that happens, if the heels aren't designed well enough, you'll watch those people just wipe out on their own. I've seen it plenty of times. I've seen people do it in the Kobe nines and so on and so forth. But that would be my only real concern. Everything else from that point part forward just feels awesome. It feels like it's propelling you. And I think that that's not only from the cushion itself, but also from the support system that they got in here. So when we talk about support and we talk about the Air Jordan 8, what do we think about? The cross straps. That's right. Now we don't have cross straps on here. Thank goodness. I, I never liked that feature. It took me a really long time to warm up to the Air Jordan 8. So I'm talking about like the aquas. The aqua, yeah, what was that? Was that 2015? No, because like Kara had a pair. Oh, it was, so it was like 2005 or six. She was born in 06. It might've been 07 then. 
I bought three pairs of those plus one for her. That was stupid. Not buying one for her, buying three for me. That was dumb. I only got through one. But anyways, instead of taking those straps and just placing them on this shoe, what they've actually done is put them on the bottom. We have an X plate right here and that's supposed to mimic the cross strap system. Do you know what this is giving me? What? Kyrie Infinity vibe. A little bit. Especially because you can see where they would go up into the side panel. Yes, right here. A lot of people thought that this right here was Velcro mm -hmm. and that you were gonna have like removable straps or something like that, which to be perfectly honest, it sounds cool. That's obviously not what's on here. So again, we have this kind of like chassis plate right here that's an X plate. It goes all the way through the midfoot and forefoot area of the shoe. It allows a ton of rigidity and stiffness in that area, but still some spring. Really reminds me of like if they were to focus on MJ's fadeaway shot but not the shot itself everything that happens before it so his feet planting he always would talk about how you're supposed to feel the defense with your legs so if you take about from the waist down that whole section of movement it feels like they've really implemented the X plate in here for that specifically I don't know if that's true it's just what I see as a Jordan fan somebody that grew up watching the guy that's what I see when I see this I'm like yo if MJ was still playing today he would rock the shit out of the entire league with that one shot just like he used to in this shoe and it would be awesome now the upper is where things start to really get interesting it looks like they've moved away a little bit from the leno weave even though it looks like leno weave right here i just don't want to call it that because i don't know if that's actually true or not all i know is that it's woven looks kind of like that really thick fly wire stuff that they used to use and again it's really see-through and everything what you're seeing through it right here that white panel that's actually the tongue so it's semi gusseted and it's attached right here but from there back it's free it's not like a an inner sleeve or a booty or anything like the original eights and this section of the material looks really cool and it also feels very like supportive despite it being see-through it should be extremely breathable as well so it feels like it could be an outdoor shoe so like i wish that they were a little bit like the rubber was a little stronger but it is what it is this back section feels like synthetic nubuck and then they've got embroidery or stitching all over it now the leather is featured on the toe and the eye stay area and i'm pretty sure that it's synthetic i think that this might be vegan friendly leather and i think that that if it's true because it it really doesn't feel like leather. Like I'd even take pictures and blow it up. It looks like there's fibers in it, but when I compare it to other shoes that I have with vegan friendly leather, it feels damn near identical. And am I mad about that? Not really. I had said in one of my McDowell videos, I think it was like that original one, the white and orange. But basically I had said like, hey, if the brand itself was to use performance grade leather that was vegan friendly, that felt like that, I would be totally cool with that. And that's exactly what this feels like. I don't know if that's what their intention was. I'm just saying that it feels good. Another callback to the Air Jordan 8 would be the tongue itself. Itself. Obviously, we don't have the Chanel patch right there, or the Chanel logo, but the tongue itself is neoprene. You have a similar logo. One of the differences, though, is that with the neoprene tongue, usually that does not offer a lot of ventilation. Instead, it offers a lot of comfort. What they've done here is they've just completely punched out holes. So you do have ventilation and you still have comfort. This is awesome. This tongue is weird as f too, by the way. Look at this. It's like a dual layered, like it's like super puffy in the black section. And then it just kind of like lips up. I don't know if this is a callback to MJ's tongue. It would be really weird, but it also wouldn't be out of the ordinary. I'm just letting you guys know if you remember the Air Jordan 15s, it was modeled after like a fighter jet and all that stuff, but the tongue came sticking out and they always had said, MJ sticks out this tongue, so did we. I know it sounds corny, but that's what they did. Now, as far as fit is concerned, they do fit true to size. I will say they look very small when you pull them out of the box. It kind of really reminds me of the Air Jordan 34s. I don't know if it's just the color blocking, but that's just kind of like the first vibe that I get when I pulled them out outside of, God damn, they're beautiful. But they do fit true to size, so whatever you typically wear, that is what I would recommend. I think that they fit perfectly one-to-one. -one. They're so comfortable. I can't even explain that to you guys enough. When you put these on in store, which hopefully you do, just bounce around in them a little bit, man. These are mad comfortable. But with all that being said, thank you guys once again for being here. We will catch y'all on the next one. Let us know your thoughts on the 38s down below, especially if you ended up playing in them. And I know that right now you probably haven't, but by the time you watch this, eventually it'll be that time. You know what I mean? I don't even remember when these release. I think it's next month. But sound up below, let us know. Thank you once again for being here. We greatly appreciate you guys. We will catch y'all on the next one. So until then, have a good one.